Dear students, welcome to the EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Raj Kishore Sharma from Chemistry Department of Delhi University. Today, we are going to discuss about the module X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy and introduction. This is under the paper of Surface Analytical Techniques 2. So, outlines of this outlines of the topics that we are going to cover today: the photoelectric effect. Then how do electrons eject from metals? Then relationship between A, C, D, and J. Equations of photoelectric photoelectric effect. Stopping potential. Then we'll discuss what is XPS. What is Fermi level will also be discussed and spectroscopic notations. We'll discuss energy scale, inelastic scattering, sample spectrometer diagram, X-ray source and a depth analysis and at the end we will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of XPS. Let us now discuss the history of X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Firstly, Henry Hertz observed the emission of electrons in 1887 when he got electric spark after illuminating electrodes in ultraviolet light. After 18 years, in 1905, Einstein explained the photoelectric effect and proposed that a beam of light is not a wave which propagates through space. Rather, it is a collection of discrete wave packets called photons. Einstein got the Nobel Prize in 1921 for his discovery of the law of photoelectric effect. Rutherford and his co-workers in 1914 recognize that kinetic energy, kinetic energy of electron that is the difference between x-ray energy and the electron binding energy. Robinson and Young observed the line shift caused by chemical bonding in 1930. That is they observed the effect of different types of bonds present in a compound or we can say that how an element is attached with different type of bonds. A main step was taken by Professor Kai Shengman and his research group in Uppsala University in Sweden to build up an electron spectroscopy as a tool in the determination of electronic structure. The first high resolution spectrum employing X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy of sodium chloride was recorded by Professor Kai in 1954. They revealed that potential of XPS. The first commercialized XPS machine came into the market in 1970 after their findings. This technique became apparent which could distinguish between metal and its oxides as well as it was able to explain chemical state information for non-metallic elements as well. Due to all these chemical effects, the Swedish group gave the term electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis or this is in short this is abbreviated as ESCA e -S -C -A. for the development of XPS technique Professor Kai in 1981 was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery. Before going into depth of XPS technique we need to know about the surface. So now we will start with surface. What happens at surfaces is extremely important in a vast range of applications for from environmental corrosion to medical implants. A surface can be thought of as the interface between the different phases that is solid, liquid or gas. We can think of the surface as the top layer of the atoms but in reality the state of the, this layer is very much influenced by the 2 to 10 atomic layers below it. This is about 0 0.5 to 3 nanometer. Surface modification treatments are often in the range of 10 to 100 nanometer thickness. Less than 100 nanometer can be thought of as the bulk. Higher, sorry, higher than 100 nanometer can be thought as of the bulk. 
surface analysis and compasses techniques which probe the prob uh, properties of properties in all these ranges now about the photoelectric effect the photoelectric effect is a phenomena in physics in this phenomena electromagnetic radiation is used to irradiate the metal surface electromagnetic radiation of series of particles and these particles are called photons so when a photon hits an electron on a metal surface the electron can be emitted and the emitted electrons are called photoelectrons the photoelectric effect is also studied in the field of chemistry such as quantum chemistry and electrochemistry photon energy is the energy carried by a single photon the amount of energy is directly related to the photon's electromagnetic wavelength and frequency the higher the photon's energy higher the photon's frequency frequency the higher is the energy equivalently the longer the photon's wavelength the lower is its energy photon energy is solely a function of the photon's wavelength other factors such as the intensity of the radiation do not affect photon photon's energy in other words two photons of light with the same color and therefore same wavelength will have the same photon energy even if one was emitted from a wax candle and the other from the sun photons photon energy can be represented by any unit of energy among the units commonly used to donate, denote photons energy are the electron volt or we write ev and the joule the electromagnetic spectrum includes in order of increasing frequency and decreasing wavelength radio waves microwaves infrared infrared radiation visible light ultraviolet radiation x rays and gamma rays and so on the energy of an individual photon is quantized and is greater for photons of higher frequency the electromagnetic spectrum extends from below the low frequency used for modern radio communication to gamma radiation at the short wavelength and high frequency thereby covering wavelengths from thousands of kilometers down to a fraction of the size of an atom visible light lies towards the shorter end with wavelength from 400 to 700 nanometers the limit for longer the limit for long wavelength is the size of the universe itself while it is thought that the short wavelength limit is in the vicinity of the planck's length until the middle of the 20th century it was believed by most physicists that this spectrum was infinite and continuous the distinction between x rays and gamma rays is partly based on sources the photons generated from nuclear decay or other nuclear and subnuclear particle processes are always termed gamma rays whereas x rays are generated by electronic transitions involving highly energetic inner atomic electrons in general nuclear transitions are much more energetic than electronic transitions so gamma rays are more energetic than x rays now what are the rules there are certain rules which should be obeyed by the photon during interaction with other particles like each photon only interacts with one electron it delivers its energy to the electron and disappears because it is a packet of pure energy and nothing else so it disappears after transferring the energy electron now has extra energy if it has enough extra energy it can leave the metal atom so only photons above the threshold frequency we call f not will cause photoelectric emission how come more intense or brighter radiation doesn't cause emission this is a good question here how come more intense 
or brighter radiation doesn't cause emission more intense radiation simply means that more packets of energy that is more photons are delivered each second so the rate of delivery of photons is high but the energy of each packet is unchanged so if there wasn't enough energy to cause photoelectric emission making it brighter won't change anything but the question arises that how do electrons eject from metal surface electrons present in the metal have minimum amount of frequency that frequency is called threshold frequency it is represented by v not nu not so to eject electrons from the metal surface the frequency of incident light must be high as compared to the threshold frequency of the electron present in the metal if energy or frequency of the incident light is less than the energy of the electrons present in the metal then electrons cannot be ejected from the surface of metal thus we can say that the energy of incident light must be high to eject electrons photoelectrons are ejected electrons from metal surface have some energy that energy is called the kinetic energy based on the wave model of light it is observed that by increasing the frequency of incident light the kinetic energy of photoelectrons can be increased and by increasing the light amplitude current can be increased on the above assumption einstein explained that light just behave like a stream of photons having energy e is equal to h nu where h is the planck's constant and nu is the frequency of light now the other term work function is introduced and we need to understand work function which is the minimum amount to work minimum amount of energy required to eject a delocalized electron from the surface of the metal it is represented by the symbol phi now about the setup here we will see a very famous experiment that led to einstein's nobel prize it has to do with how electrons and photons interact the basic idea of this experiment is as follows by sending light on a metal target we see that electrons are ejected these electrons can create detectable current by applying a counter voltage we can change the current and determine number of electrons ejected and their individual energy by shining different frequency light with various intensities we can study in details the interaction between light and electrons here an adjustable voltage is also applied and voltage can be forward or reverse biased which slows down the electrons photoelectrons returns to cathode through an emitter that records the current now some experimental results here we will see some results if photoelectrons get ejected when you shine monochromatic light on the target the current increases when you increase the intensity or brighter light it means more photoelectrons but above a cutoff wavelength no photoelectrons get ejected no matter how great the intensity of the incident radiation is and for the wavelengths below the cutoff decreasing the radiation to very low intensities doesn't completely eliminate the production of photoelectrons from the graph we can see the relation between kinetic energy of photoelectrons light amplitude and electron current symbol a represents the ampere which is the unit of electric current j represents the joule which is the unit of kinetic energy and cd represents the candela which is the unit of the light amplitude or luminous intensity in general more photons emitted per unit time the greater the intensity of light a single a single photon have wavelength and speed therefore the energy of a single photon is not measured by its amplitude 
However, the amplitude of a light wave depends on the number of photons per second being emitted. From the first graph, it can be seen that light amplitude and cu electron current are linearly dependent when frequency of incident light is greater than threshold frequency. In the second graph, it can conclude that electron kinetic energy is independent of light amplitude. Now, equation of photoelectric effect. The equation of photoelectric effect can be written as Ke is equal to, Ke refers to the kinetic energy, Ke is equal to h nu minus phi, where phi is the work function, is equal to h nu naught. Then, photoelectric effect equation becomes Ke is equal to h nu minus h nu naught and kinetic energy can be positive only when nu is greater than nu naught that is the necessary condition for the photoelectric effect to occur. If the incident frequency to equal or less than threshold frequency then kinetic energy becomes equal to zero or negative that means the electrons cannot be ejected from the metal from the metal surface. Thus, we can say that kinetic energy depends upon the frequency of incident light. In general, higher frequency photons have more energy. So they should make the electrons come flying out faster. Thus, switching to light with the same intensity but a higher frequency should increase the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons. If you leave the frequency the same but crank up the intensity. More electrons should come out because there are more photons to hit them but they will not come out any faster because each individual photon has the same energy. And if the frequency is low enough then none of the photons will have enough energy to knock an electron out of an atom. So, if you use really low frequency light, you shouldn't get any electrons, no matter how high the intensity is. Whereas, if you use a high frequency, you should still knock out some electrons even if intensity is very low. Now, the stopping potential. Maximum kinetic energy can also be calculated using stopping potential. Stopping potential is the potential necessary to stop the electron from one side to other side that is from cathode to anode or we can say that the voltage required to completely balance the kinetic energy of electrons ejected from a material surface. The maximum kinetic energy of the photo electron can be calculated as Ke is equal to E V naught where K is, is equal to the product of E V naught where V naught is the stopping potential and E is the charge of the electron. Now how do we interpret this? Slope is always found sum for all targets. Y intercept is different from different target materials. Photoelectric effect equation becomes E V naught is equal to H into a nu minus nu naught. V naught is the stopping potential. H nu is the work function of the metal. Work function is the minimum amount of energy required to remove an electron and H is equal to 6.63 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 that is the Planck's constant. X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy or XPS is the surface analytical technique which is used to investigate the chemical composition of sample surfaces. It provides wide information about the chemical structure of the catalyst composition. Even you, fi you can find dispersion also because you can just uh, because you say just like in terms of the bond or energy which is required the kinetic energy of the electron. It measures that it measures that and related to the binding energy of the electrons which are the core electrons. XPS is also known as electron spectroscopy or chemical analysis of 
और एस का ए एस सी ए एन एब्रीवेशन इंट्रोड्यूस बाई काई शेंगबाई शेंगबैन रिसर्च ग्रुप टू एम्फोसाइज द केमिकल इंफॉर्मेशन दैट द टेक्निक प्रोवाइड्स नाउ हाउ वट इज द फॉर्मिलेवल एक्स ए फोटो इलेक्ट्रॉन स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी वर्क ऑन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट इन एक्सपीरियंस एक्स ए फोटोन्स आर इरेडिएटेड विद ए सैम्पल दैट लीड्स टू इंजेक्शन ऑफ फोटो इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एज शोन इन फिगर एक्स ए फोटोन्स इंट्रैक्ट विद एन इलेक्ट्रॉन इन के शैल कॉजिंग द एमिशन ऑफ वन एस फोटो इलेक्ट्रॉन द रिजल्टिंग के शैल वेकेंसी इज फिल्ड बाई एन इलेक्ट्रॉन फ्रॉम ए हायर लेवल विच कैन लीड टू इधर एक्स रे फ्लोरसेंस और द रेडिएशन लेस डी एक्साइटेशन प्रोसेस ऑफ ओ जे एमिशन द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ द इजेक्टिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन इज द ग्राउंड वर्क ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंटल एक्सपीरियंस काइनेटिक एनर्जी बाइंडिंग एनर्जी एंड वर्क फंक्शन कैन बी एक्सप्लेन बाई फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट विच वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑलरेडी फ्रॉम द डायग्राम अब वर्क फंक्शन कैन बी डिफाइंड एज द एनर्जी डिफरेंस बिटवीन फर्मी लेवल एंड द वैक्यूम लेवल द काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन इज नॉट एन इंट्रेंसिक मेटीरियल प्रॉपर्टी बट इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द फोटोन एनर्जी ऑफ द एक्स रेज एम्प्लॉयड काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज एक्सपेरिमेंटल क्वान्टिटी मेजर बाय द स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर फर्मी लेवल कैन बी डिफाइंड एज द हाइएस्ट एनर्जी स्टेट दैट ऑक्यूपाइड बाई इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन ए मेटीरियल एट एब्सोल्यूट जीरो टेम्परेचर सो इफ वी इंक्रीज द टेम्परेचर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स कैन जम्प इन हायर एनर्जी स्टेट्स फ्रॉम द लास्ट फिगर इट कैन बी सीन दैट बाइंडिंग एनर्जी और बी ई इज द एनर्जी दैट कैन बी डिफाइंड ऑफ ए होल स्टेट एज द एनर्जी डिफरेंट डिफरेंस बिटवीन इनिशियल एंड द फाइनल स्टेज फाइनल स्टेट ऑफ द स्पीसीज कंटेनिंग कोर होल बी ई is an intrinsic material property of the photoelectron and does not depend on x-ray photon source binding energy of element show slight variation and depends upon the exact environment of atom ions or molecules now the spectroscopic notations spectroscopic notations is used in xps if it is used to describe which electrons are involved with each of the observed transition in general the spectroscopic notation can be represented as where n is the principal quantum number l is the orbital angular momentum j is the total angular momentum the total angular momentum is found equal to l s thus if n is equal to 1 l is equal to 0 and spin quantum number s is equal to plus minus half and then j will be half and it can be represented as 1s 1 by 2 1s half and if n is equal to 2 l is equal to 1 s is equal to plus minus half then j will be 3 by 2 and 1 by 2 and it can be represented as 2p 3 by 2 and 2p 1 by 2 now about xps energy scale the oj electrons are emitted when kinetic energies that are only dependent on the electronic state of the element responsible for the ejected electron photo electron line energies depends on the photon energy oj electron line energies not depend on the photon energy now binding energy scale is considered since photo electron peak come on same binding energy with different primary source photo electron line energies do not depend on the photon energy oj electron line energies depends on the photon energy about the emission of electrons trajectories of emitted electrons from the sample surface this is number 1 if it were captured before reaching to the surface and never reached to the surface follows route 3 number 2 if electrons reaches the detector without any energy loss these electrons contribute to xps peak follows route 1 number 3 
if it lost energy before reaching the surface that is if it escaped from the solid and reached the detector but with e less than e naught these electrons contribute to background of the xps spectrum called inelastic scattering which follows root 2 each inelastic scattering event leads to number 1 a reduction in the electron energy and number 2 a change in the direction of travel now about inelastic scattering so from the figure it can be seen that electrons emitted from solid surface shows low energy peak in spectrum that is called inelastic scattering and these electrons contribute to the background of the xps spectrum and also it can be seen that electrons without energy loss show characteristic peaks in xps called photo emission peak in figure there is the energy level diagram for a conducting sample this diagram is called sample spectrometer energy level diagram for conducting sample you can see that fermi levels of sample and spectrometer are aligned and we only need to know the spectrometer work function for conducting specimens a fine strip of conducting paint in addition to the adhesive tape is all that is necessary to prevent sample charging solvent in the conducting paint can cause the pump down time to extend as they evaporate in the vacuum alternatively metal tape with a metal loaded that is conducting adhesive may be used in the case of powders the best method is embedding them in indium foil but if this is not feasible dusting them into double sided adhesive tape can be very satisfactory alternative this is a sample spectrometer energy level diagram for non conducting sample in an insulating sample the emitted electrons cause a positive potential which subtract from the kinetic energy and is increasing until electrons from the surrounding limit of the potential of the sample for insulators the conduction band is empty and such a connection does not exist therefore any charge accumulation will shift the fermi potential to higher values for negative and to lower values for positive charges there are no free electrons or holes in the insulator its fermi level or virtual actually its fermi level cannot be equilibrated with the fermi level of the detector so e ch can be determined by word electrically calibrating the instrument to a spectral feature in xps high intensity x ray beam with a narrow line width gives best spectroscopic result most commonly used x ray source are aluminum k alpha magnesium k alpha both have line width less than 1 electron volt other than this x rays can penetrate the sample to depth on the order of a micrometer x rays cover area about 1 into 1 square centimeter but electrons are extracted only from narrow solid angle that is 1 into 1 mm square useful electron signal is obtained only from a depth of around 1 to 10 nanometer of the surface xps has many advantages it can identify the elements present in a sample as well as provide information about chemical bonding it means if an element is present in a compound has different bonding than such type of information can be provided by xps other than this if an element has bonding in different compound then in each case xps will give same binding energy of the element thus it can give few huge information about different types of chemical bonds in a material xps also uses the non destructive depth profiling that is called angle resolved xps or ar xps in ar xps without etching the specimen depth information can be obtained along with qualitative analysis quantification of chemical composition is also possible that is we can calculate 
amount of particular element present in a specimen. XPS can also be used to image the surface of a sample. XPS elemental, elemental mapping give spatial distribution of elements on a surface. Surface sensitivity of XPS is also found very high about 10 to 100 nanometer. Thin film thickness of native oxides such as SiO2, Al2O3 etc. can also be calculated using XPS. XPS technique also has many disadvantages like requirement of high vacuum is unnecessary, is necessary. Hydrogen and helium are essential, Im, essentially impossible to detect by X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Helium is not normally present as a solid and even when present in case of implanted. In a solid, its 1s orbital has a very small cross section for photoelectron, photoemission. Hydrogen also has an extremely, uh, has an extremely small photoelectron cross section and suffers from having to share it only electron in forming compounds which then resides in it in a valence like orbital it is very expensive technique it requires large area for samples xps takes much time for sample analysis generally 30 minutes for 30 minutes to 8 hours per sample now we would conclude the introduction part of XPS. For ejecting electrons from metals, energy of incident light should be higher than energy of electrons present in the metal. Kinetic energy of photoelectrons can be calculated using photoelectric effect e equation Ke is equal to H within bracket nu minus nu naught. Electrons go to the detector without any energy loss shows characteristic peak called photoelectron peak. Electrons go to the detector with, same, with some energy, some energy loss show XPS background called inelastic peak. Binding energy scale is considered both conducting and non-conducting samples can be analyzed. So XPS is a surface analytical technique which is used to investigate the chemical composition of sample sample surface basically. It has been observed that high intensity x-ray beams with a narrow line width gives best spectroscopic result. So always consider high intensity beam. Other than this, we talk about advantages and disadvantages of XPS. Thank you.